When you first start learning to program, one of the things that is very confusing is what is necessary suffering and what is useless suffering. And this can be a process that can take years to master. I'm going to break it down in a way that I believe can help people shortcut this process by, let's say, five years. So first up, let's look at what's actually programming, what's essential. Uh, if you think about a function here, which has an input, an X and a Y, it does a unit of work. And this is, let's say, a total, uh, which would return back the sum of X and Y. And then the return, this is all programming languages. It could be Rust, it could be Python, it could be JavaScript, it could be Ruby. But the essence of programming is you have a unit of work that takes inputs, it does the work, and then it returns back. Anything else other than this is either useless suffering, which you should automate, or it's optional. It may or may not be useful. So first, let's take a look at useless suffering. These are things that you should automate. So debugging runtime errors, really, this is not something you should be doing manually. When you first start programming, you get overwhelmed because you think that you're making all these mistakes. Well, that's true. In programming, everything's broken all the time. But the, the really the role of a programmer is to fix this with automation. So you should be using continuous integration, make files, uh, really good linting tools, potentially using uh, Copilot or some other, you know, coding assistant to help you with runtime errors. Uh, likewise, packaging systems. This is another one that uh, can really confuse people when they're first starting to program. They think that, you know, using Conda or PIP or some other tool is programming. It has nothing to do with programming. In fact, uh, it potentially could be called a bad uh, environment. Uh, and so many packaging solutions are uh, really not well designed. Uh, and they're competing with each other, and this has nothing to do with programming. And so if you feel like you're not making progress, it could just be that you're wasting your time spinning your wheels on something that doesn't make sense even for experienced developers. So this is something that should be automated as well, and it's not something you should spend a lot of time worrying about as a newcomer. Syntax errors is another one. Uh, you know, If you're using uh, formatting and linting tools that automatically check for this, you, you really don't need to worry about this. The editor can help you with syntax. This is not something you should spend a lot of time on. Boilerplate code is another one. Let's say that you're defining a class or you're working with some kind of you know framework, et cetera. The boilerplate code, if you don't understand it, means nothing, right? This is just useless suffering that can be uh, solved by tools like generative AI, for example, or maybe a really good editor. Uh, virtual environments, I think this is a, I would call it a tax in languages like Python, where there's a productivity tax because it's a scripting language where you have to constantly remember whether you're in the right virtual environment, etc. This has absolutely nothing to do with programming. Uh, and it's suffering that you hopefully can automate logic errors as well. Once you start building some code, why won't you put some automation in place so that you don't have to make logic errors. And this is a unit test. And if the unit test runs automatically when you check in your code, you don't have to worry about this. Another one that's actually pretty much solved now uh, with tools like GitHub Codespaces is your development environment. You shouldn't be spending two weeks setting up an environment. This was very common early in my career where a new developer with you know a master's degree or a PhD would spend two weeks setting up their environment. So they're obviously extremely talented, but the development environment was horrendous to set up. Nowadays with tools like GitHub, Codespaces, Docker, et cetera, or cloud-based environments, it should be instantaneous. It's not something you should be spending a lot of time on. Now let's talk about things that may or may not be useful. This is also something that people that are new to programming get confused about is that, let's say, I would call this a kind of a, you know, maybe elitist type programmer would say to somebody, if you don't do object oriented programming, you're not programming. Well, that's just false. And the reason it's false is that this is programming and it's not object oriented programming. You can do programming that doesn't require objects. It's a potentially useful abstraction to do object oriented programming, but it has nothing to do with learning to be a programmer or programming. You can solve programs with just an input, a unit of work and an output. Likewise, with concurrency, it's very easy when you first get started with programming to get trapped into thinking you should always spin up threads or processes or do async, you know, network I.O. 
but in fact, that can be a, a real burden for the problems that you're trying to solve. And so it may or may not be useful. Same with, you know, complex algorithms. It's easy to get excited about, you know, the most complex algorithm you can think of. But initially, when you're first starting out, it may or may not be useful to use the best algorithm. Another one is test-driven development. A lot of times uh, you'll hear people who are more, I would say, like zealots in terms of testing, uh, and they will say to you that you can only write a test first before you write code. That's simply not true, right? It, this may or may not be useful for the project you're on. Also frameworks. A lot of times people confuse programming with a framework. A framework was written by a third-party developer. The framework may or may not be useful if it's a web framework or command and tool framework. In fact, it may be so complex you don't understand it. It doesn't mean that's a reflection on your ability. It could just be a bad framework. Likewise, with project management, a lot of non-technical people especially gravitate towards Scrum and Agile because it's easy to get certifications. And then they push these, uh, you know, I would say agendas on the developers and developers can feel like, you know, they're confused because they're not making progress. But the reality is that the methodology itself may just be flawed. So it's important to identify constraints so that you're focused on what's important, which in my opinion is an input, a unit of work, and an output. If you understand this and you slowly build up results based on this and you automate the stuff that you can't automate and you avoid doing things that are optional until you actually need them, you can probably take a five-year shortcut in productivity in your career.